What's up everyone? In this video, we're gonna talk about how to refresh your auth tokens for the YouTube API. So we've got, there's actually a couple different approaches that we're gonna talk about. Um, and this is the error that you might run into, signet authorization error in videos controller or in whatever controller. And it will say that the client secret is missing or it's an invalid request. This is actually because we attempted to make an API call to the YouTube API and our, authentic, our, our, our auth token for making that call has expired. And so in the gem that Google has provided, it has a, a built-in mechanism for attempting to refresh the token um, using these like additional properties. And so this client secret, it's actually talking about the OAuth client secret and the OAuth client ID that are used for exchanging those refresh tokens and refreshing those tokens. So when it says the client secret is missing, it's a little misleading because it's actually because your token has expired and um, we haven't properly configured the service to, um, to update our auth token. And so what we could do technically is here directly in our YouTube service that we've implemented where we have our, our logic for uploading a video or we have our logic for you know uploading thumbnails or fetching channels or fetching the videos for a channel. All of these are passing in this options block when we make API calls to YouTube where we're passing the auth client. Now by default, we set up our auth client very simply where we're just passing in um, this credentials JSON blob that we get when we first authenticate to YouTube. Now, uh, if we were to properly configure this, we could do something like so, where we say uh, at auth client dot update, and we can pass in a few things. So it's gonna want the client ID, and this is our OAuth client ID and the client secret, which is the OAuth client secret. And both of these exist in our credentials. So rails.application.credentials.dig uh, YouTube and client ID. And same thing here, except we're gonna pass in client secret, secret. And okay, so this should pull out our client ID and client secret from our encrypted credentials. And then we also need to pass in a, an, an additional uh, proper, uh, additional parameters argument that says that the type of request we're making is offline because the customer or the user in this case is not online with us. And so we say access type is offline. Now by doing this, by passing this update into the auth client, now when we refresh the page or try to take an action where we're uploading, in this case, we are syncing a description to a video. So if I confirm and say resubmit, this should succeed and it's succeeding because as it's trying to, or like before it attempts to make its request to YouTube, let's, uh, let's clear this out. Before it makes its request to YouTube, um, it checks to see if that auth token is valid. And if it's invalid, then it automatically refreshes it for us. Now, the downside to this is that uh, as soon as we authenticate the first time and that token expires, then every single subsequent API request is going to need to refresh the token and make an API call to um, to the API here to, to refresh the token. And so that's because we're not actually updating at session.credential. So I wanted to do, what I wanted to do today was just build a background task that runs once daily and refreshes the token and stores the updated and refreshed access token on our, our YouTube session so that you only have to log in once and then every single day we get a new token and uh, then anytime you want to use that token, we already have a fresh one and we don't have to like refetch a new one. There's probably another like really clever approach that we could take where we check to see if it needs to be refreshed here and like lazily refresh it. Um, but I wanted to talk about background jobs. So we're gonna do, we're gonna do it in a background job. Um, so, okay, so let's go to our YouTube uh, token job. And here what we wanna do is I think we're gonna just shell back out to that or like use that service, which already has everything that we care about um, in order to refresh the token. So um, I think what makes the most sense is saying that we want to perform this on a user um, because each user has could have many YouTube sessions. So if we go to the user model, um, we're gonna just pass in the user ID and then grab that user. 
user.find uh, user ID. And the reason we want to pass the user ID instead of the user here, well, this is this is my own, I guess it's my own preference or something that I've learned before is that you want the arguments to perform to be serializable. So this should be like strings or numbers or whatever instead of instances. I think there's some magic that can happen in Rails where it'll figure out like if you're passing a model, how to like find it and update it and such. But this is this is the pattern that I generally use. Um, so in order to get the, the session that we care about, we want to get the users um, YouTube sessions.last. And we want to initialize a new YouTube service with that session.credentials. And then what I think we want to do is inside of this YouTube service, we'll implement a new method called like refresh token or something refresh token and um, we will expect that this returns um, returns the refresh token data just so, and then over here in the actual job then we can like store it in credentials and save it off um, so we'll call like y dot refresh token and then this is going to be like our new token and we're going to need to like this new token data that we get back is just going to be like a little bit different from credentials. So we'll want to merge it with credentials and then save the credentials. So like um, merge with existing creds and save. Um, OK, I don't actually know what that looks like yet. So let's see if we can get this working. So our auth client here should say something like uh, auth Let's see, auth client dot refresh. I think that might be all that we need to do is call auth client dot refresh bang. And um, that should give us back our creds. So if we were to like just use, do this in a, uh, in a terminal session, I'm gonna start up Redis server over here. And I'm also gonna set up the queue, the, the worker so that our background jobs are working locally and then um, we've got our rail server running and the, let's see, what did we want to do? Oh, let's just jump into rails console and see if that actually refreshes as we expect. So if we say like, um, initialize a new service and pass in YouTube session dot last dot credentials. And then if we say, um, why dot refresh token, Ah, so it doesn't take it doesn't take credentials. It takes the session, so it takes the entire session. Um, in that case, we might be able to just say like bang and then have it update the session directly. But uh, I kind of like not having it save or like I want to try to keep all of my persistence logic outside of my service. So the service is really just wrapping up the API calls and not actually dealing with the database. Um, and I'll keep my database interaction outside of the service. And I think it's okay to keep it in the job. Um, yeah, I kind of treat the, the, the job, the, perform, the stuff we perform in the job, similar to what we would perform in a controller action. Um, that's just kind of like a mental model that I've had. Um, so we actually want to initialize this differently. We don't want to pass in credentials. We just want to pass in the whole thing. And then we want to say y.refresh token. Okay, cool. So this is the refresh token that we got back. And it has the access token, expires in, and a scope. So if we look at the um, the last um, yeah so the last session is YouTube session dot last dot and it had credentials and its credentials included the authorization URL and the filter URL and like a whole bunch of different things but one of those was the access token so that is something that we want to update um, we probably also want to update expires at to be whatever time dot now time.now.2i, um, which is this minus that. So it expired that many seconds ago or whatever. And so we want to update the, the expires at and the refresh token, or no, it's just the access. Okay, so let's see, we get back the access token, expires in scope and the token type. So I think we might just need to update the access token and expires in. Um, so this is going to be something like this. We want to say like credentials is user dot you or like the session dot credentials. 
Um, and then we want to say creds at access token is equal to the new token at access token. And then we want to say creds at expires at is equal to time.now.2i plus the new tokens, um, what did it give us? Expires in. So that's gonna be like the number of seconds or milliseconds or whatever. Okay, I think this might work and then we can just save it. Let's see, so then we can say session.credentials equals creds and then session.save bang. We want to use a save bang here instead of just a normal save because we want this to raise an error if something fails so that we can see it in the logs and we can um, we can actually then rerun or like retry this if we find a bug and we want to we, we need to retry it. So let's see if this works. So refresh YouTube token job. Um, right now our token is expired, right? Because this expires in. I have a, an Alfred workflow called DF, which is super handy. You can just drop in one of these timestamps and then it tells you what the real time is. So today is actually the 14th of March, not the 11th of March. So this token is expired. And the token used to start with, what did it start with before? And the access token, let's see, it ended in like 8ZT or something. So that's cool. Clear, uh, let's actually just restart this. And then we'll perform this later. So we'll say dot perform later. Now this should execute uh, as a background task using our, our rescue workers. So when we run that, it enqueued it and it should be doing stuff and executing. And um, we might not actually see any output from this, but we could open up localhost 3000 slash jobs and we can see that it failed. Refresh, okay. So wrong number of arguments, zero given, one expected in perform number four. Okay, so when we call perform later, we need to give it a, a user ID. So I forgot to give it a user ID and it's it takes in, uh, I'm just gonna give it argument number one, which is user ID one. And we're gonna just remove that job because retrying it with the wrong number of arguments isn't gonna really buy us anything and it's not gonna work. So I think that may have executed um, and we can, oh, there it goes. Okay, so, or maybe that was copy paste, I don't know. Let's, so if we, if we, um, if we check out the YouTube session.last.credentials access token, then the old one, recall that the old one ended in like 8YT or 8ZT. And this one now ends in GUG and the expires at is, in the future. And the way that we can confirm that this works is we need to comment this out because right now the way that this is set up is this would like resolve a new token and work anyway. Um, so let's refresh our add a categories feature and we'll edit it and maybe we take the quotes out from categories. And the whole point of that is so that on the actual YouTube video over here, we're gonna like change what the title is to have no quotes. So then we're gonna update the video and click sync. And it looks like that, that totally worked. Okay, so no quotes anymore. We, we were able to make that API call. So that succeeded and that's great. So that means that this, this we're gonna put this back in because this is gonna be what we're gonna fall back to. And this will lazily refresh our access token if we need it. Otherwise, we're gonna run this background task once per day so that we don't actually have to lazily refresh the access token. Okay, so just as a recap, what did we do? We, uh, we updated our refresh YouTube token background job so that it found a user in their most recent YouTube session. So this is their, their login session. Uh, and then we updated our YouTube service so that it had a refresh token method that uh, refreshed the auth token and when that token came back, we updated our database representation for the token, the access token and when it expires. And then we saved that on the session so that 
next time we make an API call to YouTube, we have fresh credentials. Um, we also updated our auth client method inside of the service so that it passed in the client ID, client secret, and these additional parameters for the access type being offline so that if we're attempting to make an API call with an expired token, this will just refresh one lazily um, just in time so that we can, uh, we can actually refresh our token. So hopefully that's helpful. This should pair really nicely with the initial episode we did about how to authenticate to YouTube. So this is really like after you've authenticated, how do you keep your tokens up to date as you go along? Let me know how, what you're building with the YouTube API in the comments. And uh, yeah, we'll see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.